we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so i want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is christocentric we have a lot of apostle eric nyameche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed bitterness destroys relationships it destroys institutions it destroys nations. In fact, bitterness kills. Bitterness drains anointing. Bitterness will drain all your anointing. So we also looked at symptoms of this malady of the heart called bitterness. And then we also said no one is born bitter. But bitterness is caused by offense. So offenses could be real or imaginary. We also said offense could be direct or indirect. Scripture says it is impossible that no offense should come. So by all means, something will happen that will cause a displeasure. So you cannot say, as for me, I will never offend anyone. Sometimes you need to set the record straight. If you want to be man pleaser, you may never be the servant of God. So that is what we have been discussing for the past weeks. And the fact that you should set record straight and you can never say, as for me, I will not offend anyone. We have been dealing with this for about two weeks now. Sometimes it is good for one person to be sacrificed to save the many. That was how we ended last week. So today my topic is simple. I know you can guess it. Yeah, because we have been talking about the fact that you can never say I will not offend anyone. So my topic for today is that you can never say no one or nothing will offend me. You can never say that no one or nothing will offend me. You can never say. Let's begin from what Billy Graham said. Be attractive and winsome. But do not compromise your convictions for the sake of popularity. What that means is that sometimes you have to offend. By holding on to your conviction. But I want to say this evening then. Be attractive and winsome. But it is not enough to insulate you from offense. You can be very careful. Yet you cannot control the other one for from from being careless. Be attractive and winsome. But it is not enough to insulate you from offense. Because the scripture says it is impossible that no offense should not come. So by all means, something will happen that will not please you. Something will cause a transgression or a wrong. That which offense or causes displeasure is inevitable. Now brothers and sisters, 
Pay attention to this statement. Life is quite complicated. We do not always have control over it. Life it's quite complicated. We do not always have control over it. <laughs> not even the president of a nation. We do not always have to me. We do not always get what we, we expected. Even what you worked Even what you work very hard for, and it is deservedly yours, you could still be robbed of it. You could still be robbed of it. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 11. We dealt with this scripture not quite long ago. But I want us to go back to it. This is the teacher, Solomon. We Solomon. He has studied that which is under this earth. As a great scientist, he has come to some conclusions. And this is one of them. I've seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong. Nor does food Come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned. But time and chance happen to them all. Mm. Any I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift. Why the race sometimes is not to the swift is something that needs interrogation. But this is life. You can work for it. But you may not have it. Just a slip. And then the swift loses the race. Then verse 12. I want us to understand the reality of life. So that we don't give room for bitterness. After all, you are not the only person living on the earth. A womb? Yeah. Why do you you want want the whole space? You can't. I didn't know the whole space. You can't have the whole space. You see, God created two people, Adam and Eve. And then when he came around and Eve, uh, Adam was saying certain things. And God said, Who? Who? Who told you? It means that a certain who has come around. <laughs> and and so during those days, there was a who. And now that we are 8 billion, you want to have all the space? <laughs> you can't. You can't. Yeah. You can't have all the space. It's better you understand life. So that you don't allow bitterness to, to, to disturb your spirit. Some can be very, very disturbing. Number 12. Moreover, no one knows when their hour will come. As fish are caught in a cruel net, or birds are taken in a snare, so people are trapped by evil times that fall unexpectedly and so, upon them. And so nipa nim nebre se mpata we yi won asaw bonimu ene enuma we yi won fidie muno sara and a we yi nipa ma ebre bonia a tu won empufrinumu. Now you could be laughing in a moment and then 
we enter into the morning in the next this brother's is life. Sometimes you'll be attracted by evil times that fall unexpectedly upon us. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. Let me just remind you what I've, yet, I've said some couple of weeks back. That the world, this falling world, is not fair. That not all the people will like you. Not all will understand you. So you cannot say no one will offend me. Not all will like you. Not all will understand you. Disappointment is a fact of life. Bad things happen to good people. This understanding of life is a good disposition for dealing with bitterness. This understanding of life. That no one would understand you. That no one will love you. It's a good disposition. For dealing with bitterness. What is dangerous brothers and sisters? And can be avoided. And should be avoided. It's not offenses. But bitterness. Offenses are not dangerous. Now it depends on how you handle it. And it is impossible that no offense would come. But what can be avoided? And what should be avoided? Is bitterness. An offense developing into bitterness. But as for offenses, it is impossible that offenses should not come. Now, in this falling world and its corrupt social structures, it breeds evil and suffering and it causes offenses. Mm-hmm. The corrupt world structure, it breeds evil and it causes offense. Now, this is not the black man's problem. It is a general problem. There is no justice on the land. So if you are living in the midst of this world, falling world, don't say that no one will offend you. Nothing will offend me. The things will come. What the best you can do is to prevent the offense from developing into bitterness. Righteousness is a scarce commodity on earth. We live among in the midst of an evil world. And there are categories of evil. We have physical evil. Now, there are certain times there's farming and to, nobody calls it farming. To be a, a kum fufu ipa, it me ba, and you'll be now, no natural disasters like earthquake, COVID, pestilence like COVID. To be so as I was so to me ba, a brimming so awa, and San Yarie, no two at the same. This COVID will come and kill relatives kill friends and then sometimes you don't know whether you should be offended at God or offended at anything. This thing comes at us. Accidents, what we call accident. You may be driving well 
but the other one that is careless will just claim lives or destroy your car. And when you come out of your car and you are, your vehicle is destroyed, you can't possibly say that, hey, hallelujah, how are you? You will be offended. You will be offended. You cannot just be, say that you will not offend anybody. Once your car is knocked, you come, you see your ugly car. So what? I bought this car just last year. You can't be saying that, hallelujah, hallelujah. You will be offended. I told you, no more bonnet to me two yen. A big crumble to me and Yarwa, a big kunkum yadofoko. Na I die on how any of your wobby bread. Told you, are to rent him cry to me see. Wa, we feed ya, who cry at the numb lord of quinsel. A sum it to me two more, and your woe, and a waffle name will be, and no diabo body in way, and try ye go more. You'll be offended. Quite be also. It is impossible that offenses should should not come. A day, same for me, Emma. Moral and personal evil. So in this life, there are people who are morally evil. Now in the afternoon while we went to work or we went to church, these guys were sleeping. Because tonight, they'll be going to work. And they are going to work with machetes. They are going to work with guns. They are going to kill. They have collected some money. Contract killing. And they know that we are going to this house and they've told themselves, come what may. We are going to kill this man. As I speak, some people are out going to kill someone. Moral, if we live among them, armed robbers, we live among them. You cannot say nothing or nobody will offend me. Nipa yeti won temno ebi e wudi fo pa ebi krampo eye akonfo a waya yenfa krampo yenfa wo kru etuo akese na wo botan ne se wo kwa kodi obi ewu emim ana wo kwa se ade na meka se kra ebi e bo abo awon ho a wo kwa kwa se ade se nipa ibi mtem ana yeti e wo wiase ritual murder nipa bi wo wa wo di sika wo di nipa eyi musuo children killing children this is moral evil. The social evil, I spoke about it. The social structure that incarnates evil. Now we also have spiritual evil. The oppression of the demonic. Brothers, it is real. The Bible speaks of evil. And spiritual evil. Sometimes demons are cast off people and their sicknesses leave them straight away. The average human being cannot contend with such spirits. Now we know and they are described as spiritual wickedness in high places. This becomes worse, this kind of evil world. It becomes worse to, to, worse to walk in when the activities of a people living in that particular generation is steeped in evil. Now, when you live in such an environment, you cannot say no one or nothing will cause my displeasure. Isaiah 59 from verse 12. Isaiah 59, 12. For our offenses are many in your sight. Now, <laughs> God is up there in heaven and everybody is causing trouble. And <laughs> we are causing him so much offense in his sight. And our sins testify against us. Our, our offenses are ever with us and we acknowledge our iniquities. 
Let's go to verse 4. 14, sorry. Yeah, twice so you would do nine. Now, so justice is driven back. Unrighteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. Now, what done a Timu any na trini a cojina a chitri na no cre ashiasi a gum na de a tene into me a mem. So justice is driven back. There is no justice on the land. And the Timu, your pamunum or Jani, a Timu Nias as an also. The, the other half of justice is what you call righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. Truth yeah. is falling on the street and honest people do not have space. Verse 15 says this. Truth is nowhere to be found and whoever shuns evil Becomes a prey. Is no, that true? Sure. No cry. I ya di and we na na di ochini wo every bone wo no of form no fa. You lift righteousness at your workplace. O di pejatini e o baby a o ya juman. You become a prey. Sure. O nyawa o be proud. People will go after you. Ni pa be fi show so o be say. They will really go after you. Be ani be sound. If you like try to set things straight. O di bomo di ah yes e be a o tin tin normal. You become a prey. This is the kind of life that we are living in. That is why we cannot control the, the evil of this world, but we control people from perpetuating it. That is why we need to influence society and possess the nations. Ana esesi ebo modi ya se yedi yinsu ba mpano ebe church ya fo fresh and se we are see you move here you born in nature and when she are now into me who know you will be the person over here. The understanding that in life things that cause offence are bound to happen in itself is a safeguard to contracting a bitter malady of the heart. Se ye ti ase se abrabo we enfumiye e wo mu no enu nko adɔ so se betumi aboye ho ban afri ya ode ho now can you lift up your hands and look at me afi bo modi ama oti so na tie me ha pastor joe bichem ye so fo bi e friend joe bichem i said there are issues everywhere i can assemble say you are see we in same p na wo there are issues in same p there are troubles in family there are troubles in marital line. Troubles among siblings. Issues at home. There are issues at the workplace. Issues everywhere. Issues in the church. So next week. I'll talk about offenses in church. Yeah. Yeah. That is a more familiar environment for most of us. So that you, you can sleep in peace every night. <laughs> we will come to a point where my prayer is that we shall all sleep peacefully every night. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> an evil spirit from God will enter you. Let's take life easy. Let's enjoy it. The process and the con. And don't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> Otherwise, you always be fighting. <laughs> because you cannot say no one will offend you. People will offend you. If you like, ask the Pen TV manager. <laughs> the one who has been introducing me every day. Ask him if nobody has ever offended you. If you like, ask me. <laughs> Somebody 
said, Oh, so you are going through all this and we always see you smiling. So what should I do? Oh, be catching him, say, Hey, and see, oh, cause I know many of you, and I debia you must have usri. Now, make us say, Hey, dear, I mean, you want me to go about crying? Oh, I said, Debia, I know, we soon edit your cream, which is for offenses. It will come, and for me, dear queen, be as well. But what I have control over is my own heart. Now, you are made to me a shame, also, or no, eh, Macuma. So that these offenses will not have negative effect. On my heart. I will see you next week. Send a bear sound from ye and for your dear Bianca Macumem. That's a message of you. Namish Rao.